We have all been there. Putting everything in the single file is something like standard universal developer experience, isn't it? However, what if I tell you that there is a better way? What if you could build the look of your application and see the changes just after you're saving the file without manual refresh? What if you could improve the code readability by splitting up the code into several files and separate the responsibilities without bothering yourself about loading each file by one by one in the WordPress? What if you could improve the old browser support without bothering yourself about this? If any of those aspects make your heart a bit a little bit faster, I insist you to stay up with me at, and check how this video can help you. I will discuss how to integrate Vid with WordPress to improve the developer experience while building solutions in WordPress like plugins or custom themes. I'm Przemek and welcome to the next episode on this channel. Let's get started. I remember the day when I found out a tool that refreshes the browser window for me automatically after each change in the file and saving this file. It was one of the best experiences that I had in my young developer journey. It was about probably 8 years ago and then I'd wish to know this tool earlier because it improved the way I create the WordPress applications. It make the development process much faster. That's why I'm here today to tell you about Vid, the tool that does similar things like this and much more. So check it out. Vid is widely known in the world of front-end development, especially in the frameworks like Vue, React or Svelte. It provides extremely fast development server which allows to build front-end application and builds the code for production. It's like having an assistant that will pack your suitcase before your flight while you can enjoy your free time and for example taking a shower. It also has a really nice feature called hot module re reloading which allows you to see the changes you make in the code much faster. Since Vid has been created to handle front-end projects using Vue or React or many more, it isn't limited to them. It is flexible enough to handle also backend projects. Laravel, for example, uses Vid as a default assets bundler in the project in the latest versions, so we can try to do the same in the WordPress. But why would we want to do it? Let's try to analyze the few simple examples. Be aware that those examples are not limited only to Vue. It's just like more general description why it is worth to use bundling tools in the WordPress development. It can be applied also to other tools like for example Webpack. Ok, so let's get back to our trip. To make the packing process easier or make the searching for things after arrival easier, you spread out all the things that you need to take on the bed. Of course, it takes much more space, but it is just easier to confirm if you have everything what you need. Finally, you call Vid and tell that they should pack it for you. It will handle this much faster and easier without any problems. You will have to just take the luggage to the airport and, and fly to your holidays. So it is like development process and packing up the assets to deploy them on production. Breaking up the code into smaller self-efficient components makes the code base more organized, user-friendly and uh, easier to maintain in the future. Smaller JavaScripts or CSS files are not only easier to read but also better for the teamwork. Vid allows merging them, so it is bundling, into the single file so we don't need to bother ourselves about loading each of them one by one manually in the WordPress site. We can just enqueue the production ready assets instead. Bundling improves the application performance by default. When I go to the vacation with my family, I usually want to take much more things that I can handle in my suitcase. Of course, I can buy a bigger luggage, uh, but who wants to pay more for the transport cost? In many cases, the transport cost is uh, much higher than the ticket for one person. In such situations, I mostly dream about some kinds of vacuum cleaner and uh, vacuum bags that will help me pack my suitcase and make it smaller, make it cheaper. And that's what 
vid does when bundling files to pro production. When vid bundles multiple files into the single one, it additionally performs a step called minification. It typically includes removing comments, extra spaces, line breaks, shortening variable names or function names and removing things that are not needed. So for example, if we define the variable that is not used in the code, it will be removed from production bundle. Additionally, it uh, compresses the output, which makes the files much smaller, which improves the browser performance because the files can be loaded much faster. So vid produces the code that does the things that we need, but for smaller plies. Bundling improves the old browser support. When we go on a vacation, we sometimes take our grandparents with us. And as we know, they have been raised in different uh, times and uh, they don't have a sense of humor as we have. So sometimes we need to explain some kind of things to them to uh, make a laugh together. Let's, let's uh, take uh, memes, for example. They don't understand them and sometimes we need to explain it. And Vid does those things for us. JavaScript and CSS introduces uh, new features every week, but not all are supported by the old browsers. Vid allows configuring tools called polyfills, which reduce compatibility problems while creating modern code. They translate the modern code that we create into the language understandable by the old browsers during the build process, so during the bundling process. It results in less work to do with better results. We get more things for the same price and it is really great situation. Bundling improves also the developer experience. Vid supports something called hot module replacement. Unlike the standard page refresh to see the changes that we make in the code, Vid tries to update only the parts of the code that have been changed, resulting in seeing the changes we make in the code immediately in the browser after hitting a save button. So for example, if we modify the CSS files and save the file, the changes are immediately reflected in the browser window, so we don't need to hit the refresh button. We don't need to uh, even automatic refresh. The changes are immediately visible in the browser window. It works the same for the JavaScript, but there is a one tricky thing here. The code that we create must be hammer ready if we want to preserve the application state. Otherwise, it will just uh, trigger automatic page refresh, which also improves the developer experience, and this process is called hot reload. I will discuss in the next videos how to create the hammer ready code, but I think that in the most cases it won't be needed in an application. I'm only talking about how great this tool is, but maybe you still don't get the whole idea and you don't think that it might be useful. So let's try to analyze this simple demo to help you decide if it is something for you. As you can see, we split up the assets code into several files. The styles include comments, some modern features and a lot of code. The JavaScript includes comments, un unused things and simple console log. We fire production build by using build command. As you can see, the vid generated a lot of files into this directory, which, which are the production ready files. As you can see, it automatically added pref CSS prefixes with which handles browser support and for JavaScript it removes comments and unused things. When WordPress works in the standard mode, it loads assets from our main domain, as you can see here. But what will happen if we will fire the vid development process? it can be fired using dev command. As you can see now, the development server has been started in the localhost with specific port. If we refresh our page, we will see that the assets now are served by this server. We need to load the vid clients and our, our JavaScript assets also are served by the vid server. Let's try to make some changes in the CSS files at first. We will change the background color. As you can see, after saving the file, the changes are immediately reflected in our browser without hitting refresh. If we make some formatting problems, they will be also visible immediately. So each change in the CSS file are immediately reflected and it is really great boost when it comes to developer experience. What about JavaScript? We have a simple script that is some kind of timer. As you can see after we save the file, by default it refreshes the page. The timer is started, so let's try to make a change in the JavaScript file. We modify the code, hit save and as you can see again, the changes are immediately visible with preserving the application state. 
we changed the JavaScript code and the timer is still working fine. V it can also improve backend integration. So for example, if we modify the blade file and hit save, Vid will automatically refresh our browser window to reflect the changes. It uh, provides the logs of what have been changed and if we fire the build process, so bundling process, our website is in the production mode and use the production ready assets, which are optimized and faster to load by the browser. If I convinced you to give it a try, I insist you to check out the next part of this video that will prove how you can integrate Vid with WordPress development process. Be aware that all the changes that we make in our codebase are available in the public repository. You can go there and check what exactly has been changed. I think that it is a nice feature that should give you more understanding of this topic and the possibility to re reflect the changes that we make in your codebase. I will post a link to this repository in the video description. I will start from some basics like for example defining how to organize the assets in my codebase. To keep things super simple and easy to access, I organize those assets by type. This way, finding what I need is easy whenever I require it. I have also created a few files and filed them with some code to have sources that can be used for bundling process. To minimize the code duplication, I set up a few constants for easier access to URLs and paths. I know that I can use functions like get template directory of it by WordPress, but I prefer to keep the codebase flexible, not confined solely to teams. Since we have source code ready for bundling, let's try to bundle the files for production mode. I use yarn as a package manager, but feel free to use what you like. Fit is flexible enough to handle various options. Oh, and because I work with SAS for styling, I install that too. Next up is configuration. When running vid from the command line, it automatically looks for a file named vid.config.js inside the project look. This file allows defining how vid operates within the project, so let's create one and define bundling process. First, I define entry points where vid initiates its building and building process. For each such entry point, vid will generate output file that can be used in production. Next, I determine where to store the output files. I want to have them organized in the disk directory without subfolders, so I set out dir and asset dirs as follows. Then I define the naming convention that I want to use the out for the output files. They should be named using unique hashes, what can be configuring using the output key of rollup options. You can build your own conventions using available placeholders there. Since I use unique hashes as the output files, I need to generate manifest.json that can be used for mapping the source to output for production build. Manifest file clearly informs where to search for the opt output files for specific source in the dist directory. The src key includes the path to the source, the file key includes name of the output file that can be used in the production bundle. Additionally, I enable source maps to make the debugging, debugging process easier and ensure that the dist directory is cleared with every build to keep things tidy. My vid configuration is intended to work with the WordPress team directory rather than domain root, so I need to set the base path to resolve asset URLs correctly. It should be set to WP Content Teams Footmate when Hammer is active, so it is the pro development process, and for production it should be set to WP Content Teams Footmate Dist. Now I can use the relative paths to my asset without any problems in the code. I want Vid to take care of browser compatibility for me. My focus is to write modern and clear code that Vid will then translate for all the browsers during the build process. By default, we Vid supports the following browsers, which are fine to use by me, but I can ex extend the support using additional libraries. I don't want to bother myself about refreshing the browser manually after changes in the PHP code, so as a last step I need to configure Vid to automatically refresh the page when the changes in the PHP file have been made. Then, to generate production build, I need to add a new task to the package.json file and run yarn build command in the project root. The assets with manifest.json mapping file will be created in the dist directory. 
The build process is running smoothly, the, file, the production files are generated in the disk directory, so now it's the time for, to enqueue them in the WordPress. I will handle this in the newly created FM Assets module designed to manage assets in my project. The output file names are hashed, so I need to search for the final URL in the manifest.json file. To split up the responsibilities and improve the code readability by moving backend details to separate file, I decide to use traits, uh, which in simple words allows to reuse code in the classes. I know, I know I can skip tried usage and build one class that handles everything and have all the methods there, which seems to be more correct approach, but here I wanted to show you something new. So I built resolver class that works this way. At first I load manifest.json data and store it in the class property to allow the system search for the correct production file and to reduce the file operations. Additionally, I show notice about the build process when manifest is not a variable. Then I build a function that returns the output file URL based on the source path relative the, to the resource directory. So for example, resolving script slash scripts.js, search for the resources slash scripts slash scripts.js key in the manifest data and return URL when found. So this function just opens the manifest.json data and search for the correct file. Now I need to create a main module controller and integrate resolver trade there. And of course, enqueue assets using WordPress functions. As you can see, this class looks really simple. Everything looks like in the standard WordPress workflow, but there is a one difference. Instead of putting the direct path to my assets file, I use resolve class and pass the uh, development resource as a parameter. The system, the resolver, will handle and search for the correct file in the manifest.json and include in the WordPress. And here lies an example how I like to simplify the code base with keeping the code clean. Assets are often managed by the front-end teams and it is easier to them to do this in a simple class rather than something more extensive that includes more functions, more backend details. It's just harder this way. If I split up the responsibilities and move all the uh, wired backend process into separated files that they don't need to touch, it's just easier to them. I don't want to bother them with those more complicated backend mechanisms and it's it's needed. I just allow them making the changes that they need, like enquiring the assets in really simple class. I think that it is a great example how to write a code that is better for others. My WordPress is ready to handle and enqueue the scripts and styles that I need, so so now it's the time to integrate the development process. Running vid command in the project root fires up the dev server, typically available at localhost with specific ports, which needs to be integrated with WordPress. This server takes care of serving assets and handling hot module replacement. So at first I defined and extend the application config with hammer setup. I set the server host, client URL, base path and the value that specify if the dev server is running. I set this by checking if development mode is enabled and if the vid server is available with wp remote get. It's simple but it works. Vid being an external tool should have a minimal impact on my codebase, so I created a dedicated module that handles all the necessary operations. There are a three steps that need to be done to integrate Vit with WordPress. At first, I need to enqueue Vit clients available within the local host in the following URL. I do this in the WP head and mm, add the script with module type. Vit works with AS modules, so I need to inform WordPress that it should load assets as a module. It can be set using WordPress, so I need to modify the script tag manually by adding type module attribute using script loader tag filter. The last part is serving assets from Vit rather than this directory. We have already created function to resolve paths, uh, which provide filter for changing the URLs, so I will use it and change URL to vid server. It basically performs the following change, from this URL to this URL. 
Then I need to initialize this simple integration in my codebase. So as I mentioned, the vid should have a minimal impact for my codebase, so I initialize it only when the dev server is available. I initialize the classes and the modules only when needed. So for example, if I had some, uh, some class that modify Yoast behavior, I don't initialize it always. I do this only when this plugin is available and working fine. And this design choice adheres to the open-closed principle, which is really important to me. It allows me to easily switch to different tools without modifying a tons of code. When I resign from using Vid and decide to use, for example, Webpack, I just remove integration class create a new one and connect it to my server. Okay, at some point I affect the core because I need to initialize and remove uh, one of the integrations, but it is really simple change. Uh, it's just like unplug one brick from uh, the whole building and plugging in another brick, which handles similar things, but in different way without affecting the whole building. And that's all. As you can see, only three simple steps are needed to integrate the Vite with WordPress. I initially thought that it will be much more demanding because of the Vite is mostly used in the front-end world, but it occurred that it is super simple. We just need to define the asset structure, configure Vite using vite.config.js and build up our process, then we need to inject the files generated by Vite in WordPress, and then integrate Vite development server that serve the assets and supports hot module reloaded in our system. Please let me know in the comments what do you think about this whole idea and do you consider it as uh, something that could improve your development experience in WordPress? I'm really curious, what do you think? I feel that uh, a lot of people don't use it and they waste their time. They like to do more for the same price and that's why I'm here and I'm here to show you how you can achieve better results for the same price and less effort from your site. And Vite is one of the great examples of how we can build the processes that works for us, that will allows us to make more money. I have one more announcement. Recently I've implemented a new feedback form on my blog and I insist you to check it out. I will post a link in the video description. Just go there if you have a, a few seconds, because it's so it should be so simple. Uh, go there and leave the scores in the each area that I asked for. Thank you for each, uh, each feedback uh, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to thumbs up and leave a comment because it will help me to grow here and will help me to, uh, to help other people. Mm, if you don't subscribe me already, please do this now to stay up to date with the latest content. And uh, I insist you to check out my other channels, my website, my blog and uh, uh, Twitter account where I post uh, many useful cases and many useful, I hope, <laughs> thoughts. So that's all. Thank you for spending a time with me and see you next time. Bye bye.